managing short term and long term, it's very similar. You need to have some kind of knowledge. You know, you can't just call a plumber every time there's a drop of water on the floor or something. You need to know what's what's causing that to manage the expenses. This is episode number four, one of the Short Term Rental Success Stories podcast. Are you an investor that's looking to have your home professionally managed? Go to cohostit.com for more information. Welcome back to Short Term Rental Success Stories. I'm your host, Julian Sage. This is a show where I talk to hosts about their journeys in starting and growing their short term rental business. My goal is that you'll be able to walk away with practical information that'll help you become a better host and learn how to scale your business. Like any exceptional host, we all strive for five star reviews. So please go on over to iTunes and let us know what you enjoy as it really helps support the show. If you haven't done so already, go on over to our Facebook group, The Host Nation, to connect with the community. Hey, Merry Christmas, Host Nation. I am super excited to be able to give you guys your present today, which is another episode. So I'm actually in Colombia at this time. I recorded this just a few days before I left. But if you are listening to this on Christmas Day, one, uh, thank you for allowing me to be a part of your family. I, I do feel like everybody from the Host Nation is a part of my family. So that's why, you know, even today I'll be going through and seeing everybody that's a part of the community and sending my appreciation, my love to you all. So today I had the honor of speaking with Jason Clements. Even with 25 properties during the peak season, Jason only spends three to four hours per day checking the properties. While in the off season, he only works during Friday and Sunday mornings, typically when the guests check in and check out. Jason shares great insights on what it's like having purchased someone else's management company, how to work with traditional vacation rentals, the learning curve of going from one to 25 properties, and what it takes to scale so quickly. If you like my show notes and the success secrets for this episode, go to shorttermsage.com backslash str41. Or if you like my show notes sent directly to your inbox every week, then go to shorttermsage.com backslash show notes. With all that being said, on to this week's conversation. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Short-Term Mental Success Stories. In this episode, I have the special honor of speaking with Jason Clements. Jason, would you please introduce yourself to the host nation? Let them know who you are and what inspired you to get into short-term rentals. Uh, yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, I got into short-term rentals I'd actually been managing, investing, and managing um, long-term rentals for over 10 years. Uh, but just living in Ontario, just the, you know, the income I saw from short-term rentals was far greater than the long-term rentals. But also, you know, if anyone's familiar with investing and managing properties in Ontario, the Residential Tenancy Act is very strict. So I've just found that managing short-term rentals, one, they're, they're kept, you know, um, kept a lot, a lot better shape because you got cleaners and people going in there and maintaining them on a daily basis. But also the income is higher and also you, you avoid the whole residential tenancy act and the nightmare of trying to get rid of a bad tenant. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I, I think it's pretty interesting. And I wanted to actually, uh, talk about, you know, what, how, how did you even get started into this? Because you said in 2000, uh, 16, you purchased your first bed and breakfast. Uh, was that coming into the mindset like, um, like traditional, like when people think of Airbnb or is this more of a traditional, uh, bed and breakfast style home? Uh, yeah. So the bed and breakfast is what actually moved us down here. But, you know, my wife, like we've chose Niagara Lake as our, as our kind of destination of choice of running short term rentals. But, you know, we've been traveling, you know, vacationing here for 20 years. And, you know, my wife was working corporate job. Uh, so she had decided she wanted to move down here, you know, buy a bed and breakfast, run that. But we'd already had a cottage that we'd been, we bought in 2014. So it was our weekend getaway. So when we moved here permanently, you know, the cottage, it was, you know, made perfect sense to turn that into a short term rental because I had been uh, renting out long term, you know, making, you know, low rent. So, Converting that cottage to a short-term rental, you know, made a lot of sense being here to be able to manage it hands-on and the income from it was a lot greater than what I was getting as long-term rental. That's awesome. You, you just love the area so much that you felt uh, like that you needed to settle down here and and find some route. And through that, it was yep. uh, purchasing a bed and breakfast. And when, when I think of like moving somewhere that you love and starting a little bed and breakfast with your with your uh, significant other, I mean, that sounds like kind of a dream. Uh, was it was it as dreamy as as it as uh, you imagine it to be? Or was it a little bit more challenging than that? Uh, no, it was great. Uh, I mean, it always been our, our plan, you know, when we retired to move down here, which is why we had bought the, the cottage a couple of years before. But you know, just things, things came into place where we moved here a lot sooner and able to enjoy the area and, 
you know, we've got a great, the bed and breakfast is a heritage home, big garden. It's actually one of the longest operating bed and breakfast in Niagara Lake, you know, so it already had established um, furniture and set up and, and guests in that. So that actually got us here, but it's the cottage that kind of got us into the short-term rental, myself into the property management of short-term rentals. Yeah, I had properties in London uh, that I was managing as long-term rentals. So just in the transition since 2016, I've gotten rid of those and gotten into full-time short-term rental. Now, I think your 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 backstory is, is really interesting. Also, how you um, got to 25 properties. Uh, so 2016, you, you, you started this bed and breakfast um, because you loved the area so much. But then in 2019, you actually purchased, um, uh, you acquired somebody else's portfolio. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that and how that came to be? Yeah. So yeah. So 2016, we had the one cottage that we owned, we managed and the bed and breakfast. So, you know, two short-term rentals, uh, 2018, you know, just through different connections, I started managing, uh, someone else's, you know, co-hosting, if you want to call it that way, uh, another property down here. And just through, through being in the circles of short-term rental, you know, I, you know, ran into a couple of, you know, a few different times around town. They had a business uh, called Niagara Holiday Rentals that had been operating for 10 years and they had actually bought it from someone else prior to that. You know, 25 properties all, all in Old Town, which is like the, the tourist desired area of Niagara and Lake. So yeah, we started, you know, talking, working with them end of 2018 and so beginning of 2019, we became the owners of this corporation managing 25 properties. Yeah. That that is something else. So you 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 purchased a business that uh, you, other people own these homes. They, they, mm -hmm. These are just like their vacation homes, and yeah. then you just took over the management for that business. Yeah. How how does that? How do you even bring that up or talk about that? <laughs> like to how bring it up to who that that you're oh. that you're like interested in taking oh. over purchasing the the business. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That was that was an interesting conversation because you know as I say just. You know, running around town, managing our, my own two properties, I would run into Eric, who you know, was one of the uh, one of the owners of the previous business, and we'd just be talking. And you know, and I actually started I, when we first moved here. I talked to them about managing our cottage, and they said we're moving to town. You know, we should be able to do it ourselves. They were great, just in helping you know provide information and that, and they actually referred one of their cleaners to us. So just in talking to people, you know, I found out, you know, they may have some extra properties and I thought, you know, maybe I could take on a few more properties and, you know, they might be able to refer some business. So out of the blue, they said they wanted to come over and talk with my wife and I. And I thought that was what the conversation was, was, you know, here's a couple of properties you could, you could take on. And, you know, they're, they start talking about wanting to retire and looking for someone to find the, buy the business. And they talked to a lot of corporate people. But they wanted someone on the ground, someone that was going to keep the cleaners and local and, and keep that local personal collect, uh, connection. So we kind of went from there. We started, you know, working with them. I shadowed um, Eric for, for a couple months. My wife shadowed uh, Janet for a couple months, learning the back end. And we just kind of came to terms there. And we took over the business with a, a service van, you know, with all the contracts with the houses and with the, the, con the cleaners. What's really interesting um, is th this is this is was was more of an established older uh, when when you when you picked up the business did it have like all of these really old systems in place because uh, you know with with Airbnb and hosting there's all these new tools you know dynamic pricing uh, automated messages um, you know uh, PMSs channel managers all this different stuff was this business uh, utilizing all of these things or was it more um, a little bit more labor intensive. Yeah, so like the business started uh, over 10 years ago. You know, what's actually interesting is the woman who started this business was actually owned this, the bed and breakfast that we own now. So it's like it's come full circle, you know. But yeah, she started it 10 years ago, you know. I don't even think she had a website. It was all, you know, word of mouth, print advertising, phone calls. You know, it, it wasn't what it is today. So she started it. Uh, Jen and Eric took over the business 10 years ago. and you know, as things progressed, I think it was a few years ago that they started researching different prop, um, pro uh, property management systems, and they found one uh, that does a lot of the the automated booking, the automated messaging, and all that. 
And so they, when we bought the business, there was already listings for each property on VRBO and on Airbnb. And there was this property management uh, website already in place for direct bookings. So yeah, we just had everything in place when we, when we started. Wow, that that is that is so interesting. So prior to prior to you picking up, just a few years before that, they were doing everything by hand and paper, and probably scheduling yep. things on a calendar. Yep. Yeah. Wow. The yeah the property management system we have now, I think, is only three or four years old. So prior to that, you know, things were not not as automated. I think that's super interesting. So, so you, you were managing a couple properties. You found someone just by being out in the market that, uh, you were actually looking on offloading some of your properties because they were managing them. And then the conversation comes up where it's like, Hey, well, we're actually planning to retire. And you say, well, okay, I'd, I'd like to pick up this, uh, pick up this business. How do you, how do you evaluate, uh, something that is so seasonal and where you don't, they don't actually own the properties. It's just a management. So how do you, how do you even talk about that or structure that type of deal? Yeah, that was a challenge. I mean, I mean, they talked to a couple different corporations that were throwing money, you know, a lot of numbers out there. I mean, the business itself doesn't have, you know, really any assets. There's one van. We have a Nissan uh, NV200, whatever it is, service van. And that's, you know, other than some, some cleaning supplies, that's the only inventory or property for the business. The rest of it is all, you know, the systems, the contracts. So, you know, it was kind of hard to bring a number in place, but ultimately what we really agreed on was what they had bought it for 10 years ago is what we paid them. So they got their money out of it. That is so cool. And and how does that conversation work with the people that are, uh, that, that own the properties? Because when you're taking on a new property manager, there's going to be obviously a different style of management and their income is dependent on the manager's performance. So how does that conversation work? Yeah. So it was, we were very, you know, very cognizant of that when we took over. So basically, you know, back in the fall last year, we started talking to the owners. We basically, you know, the old previous owners of the business started talking to the owners of the houses, just said, you know, we're looking at coming on, helping them out, you know, joining the business as it is, and just kind of getting to know some of the owners that way. And it was just kind of a slow transition. So even when we officially took on the business in January, you know, Janet and Eric were still there and we told the owners they're still there. So it was you know, a very smooth transition for everyone. With picking up multiple properties, there, there's a big difference from managing two properties um, to managing 25 properties. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how, how, what, what was your business systems like prior to you picking them up? Was there a learning curve? What, what, what did that look like? Not, not really. I mean, when you've got 25, you're managing 25 properties. You know, I mean, I had up to five, you know, maybe 10 units over the years of long term. So you've got, you still got furnaces, you still got house systems you need to maintain. So it's the same thing with a short term rental and managing these properties. But you know, when it comes to short term rental, you know, I'd had two, I had three years experience of using VRBO, using Airbnb, you know, I created my own spread, my own um, bookkeeping spreadsheet to keep track of everything, did all the calculations as far as you know, what, um, what money's coming in, what the expenses are going out, uh, what the cleaning costs are. So, uh, but I was familiar with VRBO and Airbnb from those, those two properties. So scaling up to 25 wasn't really that different. I mean, there was a learning curve, learning the new property management system, converting from my spreadsheet. But, you know, it, apart from that, there wasn't a lot of learning curve. I mean, it's my wife has helped. She, she knows a lot more of the back end than I do. Uh, I'm the one that kind of the boots on the ground, going to the properties, you know, making sure everything's the cleaners have done their job when when guests have left and new guests comes. So what 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 is the difference? Looking back now, um, would would you would you still acquire a business? Because a lot of people are going out there, and you have you have a marketing background. Um, could you have not gone out there and uh, started? Uh, just trying to build up business through like this uh, co-host model, going out there pitching uh, people, or uh, do you think that it's it was actually better to uh, acquire a bunch of properties? Definitely better to acquire a bunch of properties. I mean, if I it would have taken me, you know, I started in 2016 with one property. It was I wasn't really putting myself out there, and then 2018, you know, I managed to find another property. But again, you know, I wasn't, you know, marketing takes a lot of work. So be able to market yourself as a property manager and find someone that's looking for that, 
you know, it, it's hard to find that find that fit. And even this past year with the business, we've talked to a few different people about bringing on new houses, but there's always different things going on. You know, one, the person's moving out of the country, some one, someone has the house up for sale and then you're looking at managing it and almost the house sells. So I think it's, it's a lot of work to bring on more properties. So definitely I would go the route of buying 25 contracts already in place. So definitely a lot easier. And were you, were you working full time prior to you actually uh, picking up all these properties? Yes, I was. So, so we moved down here in 2016. My wife was working, you know, the corporate, corporate life, doing a lot of traveling. She quit her job. I was lucky enough with the company I was working with to be able to work from home, you know, doing online marketing. So, you know, for the last few years, I was just working from home, you know, managing a couple properties at the same time. But buying the business gave me the, the opportunity to quit my job. So, you know, leave that job out of London and work full time with the properties. So, I mean, when I say full time, middle of summer when, when we've got 25 properties fully booked, you know, my, my work day might be three, four hours checking on properties. Now that we're in the off season, you know, I work Friday morning, you know, make sure houses are ready for check-in. You know, I work Sunday, Sunday morning after making sure the houses have been trashed when people checked out. And that's basically my work week, you know. So you, you literally, you, you left your job and you purchased the job that you, you work a whole lot less. Yep. A lot more responsibility, but a lot less time. That's awesome. That that is so cool. Did you so when you purchased the business, you you knew that it's like, oh, the income that it's making, I'll just be able to quit right there. Yeah, there was a bit of transition. I mean, we we started the business uh, as the owners in uh, in end of January. I didn't. I gave my notice at my business at the the company I was working for, but I put it for like April right before the busy season. So I was kind of making double income there. Awesome. And what what else has short term renting allowed you to do um, compared to when you were working a full time job? Uh, well, the ske- the flexible schedule is great. Um, we're we're kind of tied here. I mean, we used to do a lot of traveling before we moved here. I mean, ultimately, you know, why would you travel when you're living in Niagara Lake, which is you know wine country? You know, we've always traveled here anyway. Uh, we are kind of tied to the town now. If we've got guests. No, I can't go anywhere. We've got a great, we've got great cleaners, um, but I need to rely on, you know, I need, if someone ha- something happens, I need to be available, you know, kind of twenty four seven on call. But, you know, there's, if I have to go out after dinner and and change a light bulb, that's, you know, it's not a huge, huge thing to do. Now, did when you acquired the business, did it did it already have like full time um, cleaner employees? Yeah, there we have contracts, so we don't have any employees, but we've got a team of uh, five different five cleaners that that do all the houses. So they they're they're assigned certain houses, so they do all that. What would you say was the most challenging part from transitioning from um, managing those those couple properties to acquiring uh, uh, twenty five? I guess I mean the tra- challenge most challenging would probably be learning the new property management system, but it's it automates everything. So, you know, we get bookings from our website or from, you know, HomeAway and it just, it processes everything. It automatically communicates with, with the guests. It automatically schedules the cleaning. So it's actually made things a lot easier. You know, it's all, all in that system. And are you, are you doing things to, to modify the business or have you kind of left things the way that they were prior? Uh, we are, um, we're trying to make things more, more automated uh, but what we've really noticed this year, you know, we've got four or five years worth of data. And what we've really seen is that Airbnb has really taken over a lot of the bookings, you know, whereas it may have been split 50% direct from the website, 25 VRBO, 25 Airbnb, you know, just throwing numbers out here, but it's now Airbnb is really taking over the VRBO bookings. So, you know, we've had to really scramble with, with how we managed, uh, the listings for, for Airbnb to make sure they were, they were optimized. Uh, and just, you know, trying to grow the business, trying to get more direct bookings. Uh, my winter is going to be spent doing some online marketing, just, you know, promoting Niagara and the Lake, promoting our houses and promoting our, promoting our business. Yeah. I was, I was going to say, what, what is a What does a typical day uh, look like for you and having a marketing background? Um, are you uh, more aggressive with how you're advertising the properties or what does that look like? 
Uh, not so far. I mean, we've been really busy and our October was really busy. So November, I just kind of took the month off, you know, there's always, you know, changing furnace filters, cha checking the, the smoke detectors, you know, normal property management stuff that, that needs to be done. So November, I just kind of took the month off and just did the minimum stuff I needed to do. And so now, now we're in the Christmas holiday season. So, you know, and I've, I've got my real estate license as well, which you know, I don't really work full time because, you know, the property management keeps me busy enough and pays the bills, but it's a nice, you know, it's a nice um, pairing. If I'm, if I can focus on real estate sales with bed and breakfasts and vacation rentals, and I'm in that industry managing them, you know, it's a nice pairing, but yeah. So I think the January is going to be when I really focus, but again, you know, online marketing, I probably spend two or three, hours a day just promoting the business and then I got the rest of the day to do what I want. That's a, that's a good, good life. Sounds, sounds pretty sweet. Yeah. Awesome. So with, 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 because this has been an established business and these have been properties that have been with one prop or uh, company for over 10 years. Um, I imagine that, 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 I mean, that's a long relationship with one particular company. Are these, have you had to, how, how do you handle that relationship with property owners where you feel that, you know, times are changing, you know, Airbnb is taking over a lot of listings. People are, have a certain level of expectancy or they're, they're looking for maybe, uh, certain levels of amenities or even more competition coming into the market. How are you, uh, communicating with these property owners to be able to, um, help them, uh, boost their listings? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so, well, actually some of these owners, they don't live in town. Some of them I've never even met face to face. So, you know, it's phone calls, it's, it's emails, just communicating with them, letting them know that, Hey, Airbnb is, is getting a lot more bookings. You know, we've had to change some of the descriptions, you know, we may need some more photos. So each, I mean, each owner is different. Some of them, we may be phone call, phone call. Some of them may be text. Some of them may be the email, but we have our property management system actually has you know, a CMS, a client management system where all the owners are in there. So we can send a, a global email to them, you know, just, you know, letting them know, you know, I mean, so we, we basically got two, two customers. We've got the, the guests that are coming to the houses. We also got the owners. So, you know, we have to make sure that the owners know that, you know, they can't come to the house in the middle of summer if they want to make money or they can't come when there's guests. So, you know, sometimes we'll send some, kind of bulk email to everyone just reminding them that, you know, if you're booking the house, you still need to leave at 1030. You can't arrive until four. So just, you know, some of them need more, more individual communication. Some of them we can just, some of them we don't even, never even hear from. And, but, but specifically, are you, are you, ha are you making changes to the home or asking or saying like recommendations like, Hey, you know, there, there's a lot more people that are coming here. We should be doing these things to be able to improve. Um, or are you doing everything yourself? Uh, yeah, again, 25 owners, you got 25 different people. Some of them are more hands-on, you know, some of them, you know, if, if something breaks, you know, if like the, the lamp breaks or the couch needs to be replaced, you know, I do that myself, you know, some of them I need to run that by them. Some of them may want to have that decision. So it, it depends on the house, but yeah, so we want to make sure that, you know, we've actually introduced a new a coupon pack. So it's, you know, whereas there may have been just an envelope with some coupons in it before, we've got this design thing, which actually promotes ourselves and promotes the town and gives coupons and maps for the guests. Uh, we've just created some postcards that we can and hand out, you know, have a stack of them in the houses that people can take with them. Uh, I'm looking at doing, starting some Google AdWords in the, in the new year. Uh, we were talking about Shaw. The Shaw Festival is a big uh, tourist attraction here. It's like um, plays every summer. So we want to be, you know, advertising where we can with them. So yeah, there hasn't been a lot of um, advertising spend over the years. So that's, Something we're going to start doing is just getting our name out there and getting in front of people so that when they come here, they know to house, uh, renting a whole house is an option. And, you know, we've got some 25 great to choose from. And, and what was, what was the management percentage when you uh, purchased the business? Uh, we haven't changed, uh, changed that it's 21, uh, 21%. 21. And are you, uh, what, what, what are you paying for like the amenities or uh, what's included with the 21%? 
it's basically just us looking after the house. Um, someone books the house. There's an initial cleaning fee that the guest pays. It's not exactly, you know, one to one what the cleaner pays, but the cleaner has a set fee for each house. So one house may be hundred bucks. You know, the guest may pay seventy five. The cleaner goes in, cleans the house. They charge hundred bucks, and it's basically a pass through. So like the owner, the owner is paying for that. You know, lawn maintenance, the owner pays for that. You know, we'll we'll actually coordinate a lot, all the relationships with like maybe the lawn and and with the cleaners, and the money. You know, the money just comes out of the what we collect. So we collect the uh, what the guest pays all comes through us. So we, some of the guests, some of the owners, we pay monthly. Most, you know, a lot of them we pay quarterly and they'll just get, they have access to, um, to the property management system as well. They have limited access to see how much money is coming and going. Was there a big difference from transitioning from long-term rentals to short-term rentals as far as um, the, the scale? Because now, you know, when you're talking about managing 25 properties and Ont- Ontario, um, well, Niagara, I'm sure that it gets a lot of snow. There's probably a lot of, uh, things that you have to take care of, like, you know, ice on the pavements. Uh, these are also big houses that, I, that I'm looking at. Yeah. That's, that looks like a lot of space that has to be taken care of. Is there, was there a big difference from managing long-term to these? Not, not really. I mean, a house is a house. It's, whether it's long term or short term, it's got a driveway. It's got you know, it's got a furnace. So so that hasn't changed. Uh, we're actually lucky being in Niagara and the Lake that we're we've got the lake effect and we've got the the escarpment. So we don't actually get a lot of snow. So we'll have a a contact with the snow snow company. You know, and we actually um, but we have one of our cleaners actually goes to the house on the day of check in and does an outside clean. So in the winter. You know, she might do some some minor snow shoveling. You know, some some ice melt stuff. So, in a, a long term property, you need to you need to be looking after the providing the ice melt and and shoveling the driveway as well, the the walkway. So it's not not really any different. Do you think that anybody could just purchase? a uh, property management company and then just learn as you go? Or was it because of your experience prior to managing uh, a couple and having that long-term rental experience as well that allowed you to be able to do this? Because 25, it's it's a different level of systems and that's a lot of work. Well, yeah, I've got 25 different thermostats, 25 different furnaces, you know, 25 different, you know, light switches and things that I need to figure out. So, uh, but I mean, I've, I think, I don't think you can just walk, you know, walk out of an office building and walk into to property management. You need to, uh, you need to have some property knowledge. I mean, you can hire someone to do all this stuff, but that's also going to kind of cut into your income. So, I mean, I'm, I may be more hands-on than a lot, a lot of property managers, but, you know, if I've got the time, you know, I don't mind going to diagnose a, a leaky faucet or something. And if I can tighten a, tighten a screw and get it working, then you know, I might charge them 25 bucks for my time, or if it's beyond that, then I'll call the plumber. And so managing short-term and long-term, it's, it's fairly, very similar. I don't think you need to have some kind of knowledge. You know, you can't just call a plumber every time there's a drop of water on the floor or something. You need to know what's, what's causing that to, to manage the expenses. And then as far as, you know, managing guests, you need some kind of customer service, you know, communication. You can't just you know, get upset when everyone calls you or, or dealing, trying to book a house. Yeah. I'm, I was going to ask, did you, I mean, you, you had, you had some experience managing uh, the, those, those couple properties for those, those um, uh, two, three years. But when you started managing over 25, did, was it like a, like a shell shock with the amount of messages and the amount of type of customer, um, you know, situations that might, might happen? Mm. It's, I mean, it's definitely at greater scale. I mean, you know, one house, you, you get to really know the systems, you know, but 25 houses, it takes a bit more time. So there's a bit of a learning curve. I mean, now someone calls me, you know, they start randomly calling saying, you know, the light switch isn't working or, or the doorknob's not working. So I have to ask them, what house are you in? Whereas before I would have known by the name what house it is. But I've actually gotten to know, you know, they say they're at... Ann Street Cottage, I can picture the, the thermostat in my mind, or I can picture the, the doorknob and I can walk them through how to, to get into the house. So, you know, it, it just takes some time to learn, learn each of the systems. 
it sounds like you, 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 you've gotten a really intimate relationship with every house and you know yeah. what, what, what it is that every house, yeah. it's like, oh, there's, there's the Ann home again. There she goes with those, those flickering lights. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you, that's, if you hire all the stuff out, then you lo lose that touch. So I'm, I'm hands on, I'm jumping in the service van and driving around every day to, you know, for a house for a check in or, or a check out or something. So I get to know, you know, the houses in that way. I can provide better customer service if someone calls, you know, they're late checking in and they can't see the, figure out how the, the code works on the door or they can't figure out how to get the fireplace to come on. You know, I can, I can help them with that. What's uh, I know this is kind of early in the in the conversation, but what's your goal with this? Is it to are you planning on managing this, um, you know, the kind of the, the rest of your retirement and then passing it off to somebody else? Or are you trying to create systems to uh, or a way to be able to replace yourself and scale this? What, what's your goal with this? Yeah, I think, you know, we might try and grow it with maybe a few more properties. I think with two of us running the business and with the, the cleaners we have now, probably 30 properties is the max. You know, I don't, I don't really want to overcomplicate it by, by expanding. So, you know, Niagara in the Lake, uh, it's a huge, covers a huge area, but it's a lot of farmland. Uh, and it's made up of a lot of little villages. Uh, Virgil, Old Town is, so all our properties are all in Old Town and we live in Old Town. So if someone calls me with a problem, I can jump in the van. I can be there within a few minutes. So, you know, I don't want to, you know, kind of dilute things by expanding beyond Niagara Lake and having to rely on someone else, you know, and I don't want to add more complications by having to manage, you know, manage more people or manage more locations. So, you know, I like it being just, you know, just, just as it is, maybe a few more properties, but staying within Niagara Lake and not, I don't want a lot of employees. I don't want a lot more red tape or if you could go back to, um, you know, farther back before you even moved to the area, would you have purchased a uh, portfolio of properties to be able to retire from your job earlier and, and, and do this? Cause it sounds like you're, you're, you're working a whole lot less um, with, with this new job, but it's yep. with a different set of, of challenges. Definitely. I mean, it was always my goal to, to continue buying properties. I mean, it was long-term at the time, but you know, just various different things that it isn't, wasn't, I mean, by heart, I'm actually a lazy person. You know, I don't want to sit at a desk and work nine to five or, or be working a lot and doing a lot of running around. So, you know, if I could have found this sooner, you know, and definitely I would have jumped at it. Do, do you think, you know, you, you haven't purchased, um, uh, having managed and, and purchased long-term rentals, do you think that any real estate investor that is looking to get into the short-term rental space can just go ahead and kind of do what you did and purchase a portfolio of properties if they wanted to get in on the space or, and, or do they have to basically have a, a manager unless they plan on being a manager full-time themselves? Yeah. I mean, if you want to get into managing, managing more people, you know, if you had a manager with the experience, you know, that would work as well. I mean, I had 10 years of experience managing properties long term, and then I had a couple of years of managing two properties short term. So, you know, I think I had the experience, you know, to be able to jump in and do it myself. But, you know, if you had the money and you had a business and you had someone with the experience that you wanted to pay them to manage it, you know, that'd be, that'd be obviously it cuts into your, into your income, into your, your investment if you're paying someone full time. But you basically have to, you need someone to be on call. They may not be working 20, like eight hours a day or even four hours a day, but they need to be on call 24 seven. So you need to be able to pay someone for that. Do you, do you think that there would be enough um, margin for profit that would even potentially be greater than long-term rentals if you were to purchase a portfolio of properties with, um, and then just um, with maybe a manager already in place? Yeah, if you, I mean, if you had something already in place, um, yeah, I mean, the income we're we're bringing in is basically, you know, my my wife's and my salary, so it's two persons, you know, full time salary. So, you know, the money is there if, if someone's got the someone buys that and they have a manager in place. Yeah, because I guess it'd be the same. Like, if somebody could own those twenty five units, and then they just decide to sell the twenty five units to an investor, and you would just be managing those as well. So, I, I, I guess, I, yeah, it really, I guess for people that have a lot of money that can just pick up a bunch of properties, um, that there's potential. Yeah, uh, it'd be great if I could buy another property myself and you know make more of the income from it. 
But uh, so the cottage that we own, I've actually funneled that through the corporation. You know, the, the business is managing it now. So I'm paying the corporation, you know, 21% to manage it. But I mean, in our case, ultimately, it's just, you know, money, you know, switching from one pocket to the other. But yeah, if you owned all the properties, it's, it's a lot of money to buy 25 properties. But, you know, if I can find someone that wants to help, wants me to manage for them and they keep 80% and I keep 20%, you know, that works for me. That's got to be a really kind of uh, good positioning on, on your part because you're, you're in this area where you have over 10 years of history. People know who you are. They probably know the Niagara Holiday Rentals um, when they're in the area. Does that, have you found um, that, that, that people in the space in the area, if they are looking to rent, or to short-term rent that they would be more inclined to go with you or um, how, how are you, uh, how would you be able to position yourself so that you uh, would be able to acquire more properties? Yeah, there, there is definitely is word of mouth. Uh, there's a lot of regulation like Niagara Lake has actually had a short-term rental, you know, licensing bylaw for almost 10 years. So we're lucky in that we're not like Toronto where they're coming up with new laws and a lot of places across the country and, you know, down in the States, they're coming up with new laws and they're very restrictive and they're saying it has to be your principal residence. So we're lucky that we've had laws in place for 10 years. But yeah, so you got to make sure that, you know, you can buy, get someplace that has regulations, you know. That's got to be, that's got to be a, a pretty scary thing to even think of that, that, that just made me think because you're, you're a, purchasing a business that is dependent on, you know, good regulations was that a big concern or fear from you before getting into this business uh we're lucky this area already had the regulations now so there are going through you know there's some problems in the area there's there's the odd house that has a pool and it's it's the, the party house so you know we you know those the odd one or two house that has the negative reputation we have to deal with that and the town is looking at you, know, you get a lot of neighbors complaining. The town's looking at redoing the current licensing. So, you know, I, I'm here. The company has been around for 10 years. So, you know, if someone is thinking about getting a property and getting someone manage it, you know, hopefully we're one of the ones that they think of. But because I'm in this, I'm, I'm in the industry and, you know, I'm listening, I'm hoping that I can kind of direct the town when they, when they go to update the bylaws to, to not make them too restrictive. Have have you noticed that there's a lot more people coming into this market that are just listing their properties on Airbnb? Oh yeah, you know definitely. I mean, as I say, that Airbnb has really taken over for as far as the bookings. You know, and people people use the word Airbnb as just you know a regular noun or a verb or something. You know, they just think that they can just buy any old property and start Airbnbing it. They don't realize that there's ta- there's bylaws that you have to follow. So definitely there's a lot out there and that's what I keep pushing back with the town is you can't add more rules if you're not enforcing the ones that are already there. You know, there's already, you know, noise bylaws, there's there's a new pool bylaw. So just enforce the ones that are there and make sure people that aren't, aren't licensed are getting licensed rather than just trying to make it more complicated for someone that's already following the rules. But in the summer, we get maybe one call a week from someone calling us up saying, I'm going to buy this this townhouse and I want to Airbnb it. Will you guys manage it for me? And then we have to get into a long discussion on exactly, you know, saying a townhouse doesn't meet the town's bylaws. This is what you need to buy to get those bylaws. So yeah, we had at least one conversation a week, but we end up adding one property in the summer. But, you know, it's it's just trying to find find the right property that will make money. And and the real estate prices uh, in Niagara and Lake now, they skyrocketed. I mean, we were lucky to buy in 2014 and even 2016. You know, right after we bought, the price has skyrocketed. So you can't even buy a property now and actually make money. But, you know, I, we moved from London a few years ago, and I'm talking to all the investors and the people I know there, telling them, buy a place here. You're not going to make money, but it's your weekend getaway. And it's, you know, the, the expenses are getting paid for by, by the guests. So, it's hard to find someone to, to move down here and buy a place and, you know, you have to, have to kind of educate them on what, what they can and can't do. 
I think I think that's really cool and that you positioned yourself because you got that license now, now that that when people are calling you, you can advise them and educate them on, uh, you know, where are the best pla- type of places that you can purchase. Um, I think I think that's that's, uh, you know, brilliant, brilliant marketing on your part. Yeah, I mean, I because Niagara Lakes is such a big area and there's all these little little ta- little, you know, hamlets kind of thing. Old Town is the desired spot. Like Queen Street is our main street. Whenever someone's looking for a place to say, to, to book, they say, how close are you to Queen Street? So all the properties we manage are, you know, at most 15 minute walk to Queen Street. So you can't, you can't buy in Virgil or in St. David's and expect to get the occupancy that you would if you had a place in Old Town. And and because you have that ten years of of data and experience, it's it's got nothing to compete on. Let's say like like Air DNA or one of these tools where it's just looking at the you know Airbnb and HomeAway. Uh, you you have this this data that goes back you know uh, you know almost a decade now. Yeah, I mean when you're looking at real estate, anyone investing or buying properties, you know you can't just look at the the Niagara region prices or even the the Niagara Falls or the St. Catharines prices because. Niagara Lake is its own market and Old Town is its own market. So, you know, whereas overall the average price in Niagara region might be five or six hundred, you know, the average price for Niagara Lake might be eight fifty. But when you're looking at Old Town, the average price is like a million plus. So you really need to know the the area and the market before you even think about buying an investment property. I'm just curious. Has anybody gotten into the uh, the the subleasing rental uh, re-rent model in in your area yet, or is that still um... not that I know of? So you know, our our company we're managing 25 properties. Um, there are there's another company that's you know probably managing about the same number. You know, he's a bit more I don't know, I, I'd say a bit more aggressive. He's expanded from the Niagara region. I think he's even managing properties in Toronto. There's a couple little people I know who who are managing for other other people. I'm not sure what kind of arrangement they have with them. But uh, one thing actually, if you're managing in Ontario, is we have uh, the Travel Industry Council of Ontario has ruled that you either need to be a travel agent or a real estate agent to manage properties for someone else in Ontario. So I'm so our business is actually a tra- registered travel agency. You know, I'm a registered real estate agent and a registered travel agent. So, you know, we're insured, we're following all the, all the rules. So, you know, I mean, people can get away with it if they want to manage two or three properties on their own. They can fly under the radar, but I'm not sure exactly what agreements they have with the owners when they're managing them. Yeah, I, I think that's so cool. You, you're, you're following all the right all the right things. You're checking all your boxes, crossing all your T's and you're, 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 you're not looking at this business as just like a short term, you know, uh, cash engine quick gain. You're looking at this as like, this is, this is where you love to be. You, you, you wanted to retire here and now you're invested into this, this area with, with these homes that have, you know, that have been invested here for, you know, years. If you could do anything differently, if you had to start from scratch, what, what would you do? Uh, well, if I can go back three or four years, I buy five or 10 properties before the prices went up. So, I mean, if you, when you talk to any real estate investor, you know, you kind of think what got them into it. I mean, if I go back 20 years ago, rich dad, poor dad was, was the book that got me into real estate, you know, but you know, it was, I don't know, five or 10 years after I read that before I really got into doing it. So definitely I'd say, you know, read, educate yourself and just, you know, start. I mean, even if you don't have the money or not, you can find the money from somewhere. And if you could give one piece of advice to someone who's trying to start their short-term rental business, what what would that be? Uh, yeah, if you can't if you can't buy a property, find someone that has a property. You know, I mean, so I've, t- I've talked to a lot of people in London that are doing you know the Airbnb co-host thing, but Niagara Lake is its own market. You know, we're a tourist destination. It's you know. Toronto may get a lot of business people and some tourists, but Niagara Lake is solely tourist industry. So, you know, I mean, I'm, you know, all my information is specific to, to the tourist industry, but, you know, if you want to get into this, if you live in Niagara Lake, find someone who's got a cottage here that's sitting empty, you know, for a couple months in the winter or for, you know, the weekdays during the summer and say, Hey, you know, you want to make some more money, pay your expenses, you know, just, find someone that's got a property and, you know, start listing on Airbnb and get some, 
you know, get some extra income. Do you think that you could really do this like anywhere? Could you have like picked anywhere um, that uh, that you wanted to be able to, let's say, retire in and then just start kind of managing properties and be able to live there? Yeah. I mean, if you're talking retirement destination, those are desired places. They're normally tourist places. I mean, I know a lot of people are doing this in London and they seem to be having great success with, you know, um, kind of like people coming to work for a couple months, you know, at the hospital or, or students or something. So, yeah, I mean, it could work anywhere. It's just, you know, how much, what your occupants can be right, like and what are your rates going to be? You know, look at the hotels. What are the hotels making a night and are they, are they booked up? You know, you should be able to find some place that, that has the, where the numbers work. And where, where do you see short-term rentals going in the future? Uh, well, there's, I mean, I'm trying to, I keep following all the news. I mean, I read that there's three or four companies that are competing with Airbnb now. I don't know if Airbnb would ever disappear. You know, definitely regulation is going to be a big, big direction where things are going. Uh, but, you know, there's people, as long as you've got a place that people always want to travel, you know, especially the benefit our houses have over a hotel is the cost. You know, you can get like five people in house versus two for probably the same price. You know, you can serve breakfast, you can bring your dog, you know, our bed and breakfast, we don't allow kids or other pets. So, you know, a house, you can bring your, you know, you bring your kids, you can bring the whole family. So I see it, I mean, I see it growing. There's going to be a lot of regulations that are, are going to prevent, you know, especially if the, if the towns really start cutting back, you know, I saw, I know some towns, you know, don't allow any short-term rentals. You know, a lot of them, they're, they're only your principal residence, which, makes it really hard for someone to expand. So I hope, you know, we can kind of reach a happy medium with regulations and with, with what people want to do, but yeah, I, I see it keep growing. Awesome. And uh, what, what question would you have for maybe another person that is maybe uh, in a similar situation or maybe uh, the next kind of step or progression in uh, automation or, or their business? What, what would you ask them? Uh, well, the property management system, we use, you know, I think it's great, but it it also has some flaws. I mean, I guess I'd want to talk about what their systems are and what 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 software they're using to see what challenges they have. We have a bed and breakfast association here, so we're always having events where you can kind of throw ideas around with people. You know, it's you know, you get you know, you get the odd question. You know, people are always asking, "Can I come early? Can I come late?" So, you know, just being able to kind of network and commiserate with people about what what people can be like is can be interesting but yeah i guess just talking about what systems are working for them and what what tips they may have or awesome and and you you mentioned rich dad poor dad as being kind of one of those most influential books do you have any other books that have really uh um influenced your business and uh, or changed your life there's a couple different books um michael masterson had some books uh robert ringer um, Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends, Influence People. Awesome. Okay. Great, great. And yeah, I, uh, I, I, lo I love your website. Um, did, was this already the way that it was when you, uh, when you acquired the business or did you? Yeah. Um... Yeah. So that's, that came with the business and it's actually tied to the, the property management system. So I don't think it's the best website. I think it could be better. You know, that's kind of one thing I'm going to work on through the winter as well is you know, what can I do to, to fix that? So when we bought the business, you know, it was January, we had a bit of learning curve trying to figure things out. And then we were like right into the, the peak season, you know, running madly. So, you know, we, we haven't really changed a lot in the business since we bought it, but now that the busy season is over and we've had a chance to catch our breath, now we can really look at what we can do to improve the marketing, you know, improve the website. I love that because I've, I've been sharing actually in some of the emails is, uh, you know, a lot of people are, are, kind of this, you know, uh, people that are just getting into this business, maybe they were riding that high and they're like, wow, this is so awesome. There's just so much money and this is so cool. I could, I could throw anything up and, and people are booking it, but then you start hitting that low and it's like, oh, yeah. am I, am I a bad host? Am I doing something wrong? Like, yeah. what, what am I doing? But I like what you said is now is the time, uh, to really start focusing on how can you best optimize your business? What are you doing to be able to, you know, maybe improve those websites where you didn't have enough time to be able to do that? Or, yeah. you know, maybe, uh, start marketing marketing and reaching out. Yeah, try and get some more of those off more of those off season bookings. Awesome. Well, 
you know, thank thank you so much, Jason. I think it is just so cool uh, your your story and your your transition into uh, managing over twenty five properties. Um, I'll include uh, all your links and everything in the show notes. If anybody is interested in uh, uh, purchasing in the Niagara area, I'm sure that uh, they have they have an expert in in that market who can best advise them. So uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Is there anything else that you want to uh, pass to the audience? Uh, no, thanks, Julian. Thanks awesome. for having me on. All right. Until next time, Host Nation. Keep on hosting. Hope you host benefited from the show. If you found value, please go on over to iTunes, leave us a review and let us know what you enjoy about the show. If you'd like to talk to hosts that have been featured in these episodes, as well as the community, go on over to our Facebook group, The Host Nation. 